Hey everybody, Scipio2 here. Um, I've had a couple requests and a few questions regarding my Midmo Smith & Wesson M&P 15. So I'm going to give a little uh, information and update, if you will, to where she's at and how she is. Um, this is her right in front of you. And uh, i got to be honest, I love this rifle. I honestly do. Um, for an out of the package setup, not bad, not bad at all. But um, this is this is what we've got. This is where I'm at so far. Um, the original Mo stock uh, mill spec. I've held on to that. We've added the Magpul ASAP, which is the sling attachment transverses and slides on this uh, welded steel ring on a hoop that uh, is attached to the replacement rear plate. Um, I run the Magpul slings. This is my MS2. It's actually one of three of them. I love this sling. It's my favorite to date. Um, I know they've got newer versions and models of this sling, but I just love this sling. Good heavy connection points. Um, as you can see, it goes from a single point to a double point just by disconnecting this jaw and then clamping it to either a rail mounted ring on the front or in my case, I use the factory mounted um, sling hoop that is affixed to the bottom of the sight post. Um, largely adjustable, quick slide on that. The MS2, it's a little thinner strap material than some of the newer models and several of the other ones out there, but I kind of like that. I also like this material. It's very slick. It's got a slight sheen to it, but it's uh, super comfortable, and uh, I recommend it. So if you can find an MS2, get you one. If not, by all means, the MS3 and MS4, I take nothing away from those. But anyway, back to the rifle. The grip is the original Mo grip with the factory storage compartment underneath. I keep a pair of uh, CR123 batteries stashed in there, wrapped in a small little uh, Ziploc bag, keeping them watertight. I also have a small Torx wrench in there. And I'll pan the camera back around this way just a little bit. Now the Torx wrench that I have in there probably saying Torx wrench what the hell blah 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 but this is my Magpul bad lever right here Magpul in their infinite wisdom thought it would be awesome to use a T8 as opposed to an Allen key like everything else so not that I've ever had any problems um, one good drop of thread lock on there and that has never given me any issues with coming loose or anything but just in case I have that stupid little, um, well, I say Allen key, but uh, little L-shaped Torx wrench in there. Just in case. But um, anyways, I added the bad lever. And if you saw one of my other videos, I talked about how I had to modify it to basically... Let me see. Will the camera zoom in for me? No, it doesn't want to zoom in while I'm recording. Sorry, folks. I'm running with old technology. But right here on these lowers, they're flared out. They have what they refer to as a finger shelf. And with the bad lever in its as-received setup, it didn't quite fully raise to fully catch the bolt. So a little bit of uh, bending outwards and then a little bit of bending upwards, and it was good to go. So uh, I run the bad levers. I love them. Um, I can't imagine owning or operating an AR without one. The... K&S uh, Gen 2 Series 2 pins, which as you can see have the real thin dog bone as opposed to the flat bar or the uh, thick rounded dog bones. Um, the trigger is all stock, although the internal edges of the sear and so forth have been polished to give a uh, smoother and crisper trigger pull not really a major deal um, also added the mod 3 latch you may have seen my video regarding that I love these latches 
this oversized uh, pull. It is uh, good stuff. Good stuff. The um, optics I'm currently running. I've had a few different optics in the last year or so, but I'm currently set on the EOTech combination of the 3X magnifier. This is their newest G333. Um, 3X slapped aside. There's no buttons, no gizmos, no levers. You just slap it and it rotates out of your way. Gives me clearance for the factory imbus for co-witness. Everything is co-witnessed all the way through. This is the uh, EOTech was it uh, XPS22 I believe it's got the 65 mo ring with the two three mo dots um, love it love it love it everything on the inside otherwise is all stock factory original bolt and all that stuff nothing swapped out there moving to the front or maybe I'll just move the whole camera maybe that'll be better Yeah, there we go. The uh, Mo vertical grip came with the rifle, added that, tried it in a few different places along there. That's where I like it best. I generally don't use it as a grip so much as a reference point. I tend to shoot more of the C-clamp style stance when shooting. So the grip becomes my reference point, my check for my hands hands placement um, added the rails these are the Magpul Mo uh, L7 I think it's got seven bars on it and there's one on each side I also have changed out my uh, flashlight mount I've had three different mounts on there now and believe it or not this is the cheapest mount of all three of them and the one I actually like the best um, Simply mounts onto the Picatinny, clamps your flashlight, it has adjustable uh, removable ring inserts that allow for different size flashlights. This is its fullest uh, one inch opening which mounts my Streamlight TAC Pro which you can also check out one of my videos on. But uh, I really like this mount, it's simple, it's light and it honest to god was like seven dollars from Amazon. I've been totally happy with it and have zero complaints about it. This flashlight, same thing. Zero complaints, love it. And gas block is still the standard front sight base. As you can see there, that's all untouched, unmolested, if you will. Um, I mentioned earlier about the uh, front position for my sling. This is uh, what I use. I know a lot of people use the uh, Picatinny mounts and there's you know no problem with that or whatever but since this was there why add something that I already essentially had. And clamps in like so giving my sling a two-point style attachment. But um, that's how that goes. The uh, factory Smith & Wesson flash suppressor or muzzle brake well I wasn't crazy about the way it looked but I have to give it props it worked rather well but it really only worked as a flash suppressor it didn't do much for anything else and not that this rifle is an uncontrollable beast or anything but let's face it muzzle brakes are the way to go especially if you're doing any kind of competitive shooting so this is a Miklik style brake this is made by uh, GGG or is it GRG? Oh my god. Um, faux pas on my part folks. <laughs> I don't remember if it was GGG or GRG but it's a Miklik style brake. It has two muzzle ports in the top and uh, three all the way through lateral uh, ports as you can see on the side and then of course the opening on the business end. But that's where my rifle is today. That's how she's set up. This is how she looks. She works like a mule. I love it to death. Um, anyway, that's the update. I'm out.